Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, YouTube. What's going on? It's your boy Joey Does Tech, and welcome yourselves back to a brand new video. Today, for me, and I think for you guys especially, is going to be an extremely interesting one. I purchased not one, but two faulty Xbox One S consoles from eBay. Personally, I've never owned an Xbox One S before, and I'm ridiculously excited to get into one. One of them is one terabyte, supposedly. In total, for one of the consoles, I paid. £47.98. For the other one, I paid a grand total of £40.99. Both of those include postage. One of the faults is that it just doesn't turn on, and the other fault is that it turns on and then turns off. I don't know if we're going to be looking at both of the consoles in today's video, but the reason I bought two was purely for the fact if I had one and I couldn't get it working, I needed parts, then I had another one that I could take those parts from. If I can get both of them working, wicked, but I doubt it will be in this video. I feel like when we get onto a new console on Joey Does Tech, it feels like a level up. And a lot of people I spoke to have stated that they actually like working on the Xbox One S's. Without further ado, let's go over to the bench and just test out the consoles. Before we get the consoles open and have the true unboxing experience, I do already have two figure of eight power leads. Now these are used for the Xbox One S. One of them is five amps and I believe one of them is three amps. If the three amp is gonna be an issue, could you kindly let me know in the comment section down below? Fragile stickers as well, lovely to know. This is historic, Joey does text first. Xbox One S, definitely a smoker's console. I can smell the smoke. And it's so much smaller than the original one. Okay, the ports and everything look good. However, it has been opened and that was in the pictures as well. It showed that it has been opened. A few little marks here and there, but other than that, all right, I guess. So I've just got my power supply. This is the three amp one. So hopefully we're okay with that. Let's find out. Okay, we're just gonna turn it on. I'll use the reflection on my glove to show you guys if it's working or not. Is this the one that turns on or the one that doesn't turn on? It made a noise then, but there was no light. Okay, it's on now. The fan's spinning up. If you guys can see, but the light is on. The console is staying on. I mean, that's that light is on. Well, apparently one of them was a beep on, beep off, and the other one just didn't turn on. So let me hook up a HDMI and see if it works on the, uh, on the screen. I literally went to put the HDMI in and the console turned off. I've just turned it back on and it's just turned off. So it wasn't displaying anything on the monitor itself and it stayed on for about, I'd say it stays on It stays on for about a good minute, this one. Okay, so that's Xbox One S number one, or number 19, I guess, from this sticker. Xbox One S number two. Visually, um, probably about the same as the first one. There's quite a little bit of like dirt and dust around the fan area um, and on the Xbox logo as well. There seems to be a tad of dirt here, but other than that, let's have a look at the back, shall we? It looks like it's been pried something else from this. I mean, yeah, this has been destroyed. Okay, fine. How are we looking port-wise? I think we're looking okay. Not too shabby. And the back of the device looks okay. Again, just a little bit worn, but yeah, decent condition in my opinion. What happens when we put power to this one? Is this the one that's just completely dead? Power's in. Does it turn on? Nothing at all. There was a little spider there. Was being the keyword. This one doesn't turn on. Okay, so this is obviously clearly the one that doesn't turn on. Question is, which one do I look at? I personally want to look at the one that's off, and I'll tell you why. I've heard that Xbox One S turning on then turning off is like a bit of a rabbit hole, and it can lead to so many different faults. An Xbox not turning on, which is this one here, could just be the MOSFETs. Um, and if I can replace a MOSFET and get it working, that'll be a massive win for me. So let's open this one up. I've never taken one apart before as well, so that's going to be a first on this channel. So from a DIYer who is literally not done this before but has watched videos i'm gonna just attempt it now apparently i think this is being snapped right so i don't need to actually rip this clip off as you see here because i think one of the main things is getting this over this little part here but that seems to be good so i think i now just use my prying tool to edge this off which i think i've just done an okay job of doing that and then all the way down here it just pries off and then down in this corner here. Oh, that's fairly simple. I thought it might be a little bit more difficult. Okay. And I've just put it back. This prime tool is very good for that. And then what, do I do this all, all the way around? I'm assuming so, right? So, just like this. Prying away very slowly. Maybe this one has been really easy because it's already been opened up, you know? There we go. Uh, well, that's come off really, really easy. Compared to the Xbox One, I'm okay with the Xbox One now, but the start, wow. 
That was horrendous. So with this, do I just pry it up? That was, yeah, so much easier. <laughs> The guide that I'm watching doesn't really tell me what torque size, so I'm gonna go with a nine again and see if that is gonna be suffice. I think it is. And again, maybe silly to some, I'm just gonna take a photo of where all the screws should go. Oh, I've just noticed on the board actually, you can see maybe, because it's reflective, but the gold, the gold screws have like a C next to them and the ones that I've just taken out, the green ones, have an F, that's handy to know. And then the silver ones, there's one up here, one down here, and they are B for Bravo. Supposedly, now it just kind of clips off like I've, okay, yep. All right, that is, it's as simple as that, lifting it out, wow. Oh, this one's a bit dusty. When I say a bit, it's a big old bit of dust. I'm gonna take off the screws at the front where the daughter board is, and then I'm also gonna take the wireless antenna stuff off as well, so I'm just gonna unscrew those. Again, with T9, sounds silly. I'm just gonna put the daughter board back in so I can uh, test it with a shell off and see if anything actually happens. Let's take the rest of it apart. Let me take the hard drive out first, this drive next. And then the power supply just folds over, does it? So I could just, if I wanted to test and stuff, I could just have this like here, right? Out of the way and then try it and test it. Nice. Let's get this out of the case. We just have four screws on the back behind the fan. And I'm assuming we should just be able to lift this out. There we go, amazing. I can safely say that that experience of taking it apart is so much better than the original Xbox One. X clamp tool. When you know how to use this tool, it's the easiest thing in the world. It's the best one pound I've spent, I think. I think I'm a bit of a meme for this, but you slide it in between here. So these two, you don't put it between the board and that, you put it in between the slot. But since I figured that out, it's so easy. I, I say figured it out, I got told. Some big dust under there. <laughs> some big dust. That is some crusty thermal paste, by the way. I think first things first, I need to give this a good dusting. This is Horrific. This board is disgusting, man. Look at all this dust around here. So this is the rail that I'm gonna look at and I'm hoping it's just gonna be a MOSFET issue and by the looks of all the dust and stuff, it could be that. There's hardly any thermal paste on the actual, I, th I think they call this a die, which is the silver bit in the middle, could be wrong. But look, as you can see, it's just dust ridden. So let me go give it a clean with dust, not IPA just yet. We're just gonna use the duster and I'll be back in a sec. Now I have been to clean this out and uh, the first thing that I'll say is there's almost like a grease-like thing on the die in the centre here. The rest of the board is okay, as you can see, dust came off like very, very, very easy, except for this area here, which I think to me, if the dust is all sticky, it's probably some sort of liquid damage, maybe. And this area down here. Now this just wasn't coming off at all. So what I'm gonna do, and as you can, if you can see a tad bit of corrosion, on this little chip here. So I'm gonna find out what that is in a second. And from looking at these areas, I think it's very, very clear that I need to clean this up a little bit further with some IPA toothbrush and a cotton bud. I think we can say the issue is around here and or here. First off, let's get rid of the thermal compound that's on the CPU. So, multimeter is out, and I'm gonna test the first thing that I've been taught to test on these, which is the MOSFETs in the area. I've cleaned a little bit up, but I've left where the water damage marks were, so that when I go under the scope, if I need to inspect anything else, I can. First off, I believe that the first pin here is the 12 volt line, and if there's a short to ground with that, then I'm pretty sure that's gonna be something to do with the power rail. So let's check that first. Am I in continuity mode? I'm in continuity mode. So I'm gonna go black probe on ground, yeah, okay. So there's a short to the 12 volt line, which is why the machine isn't turning on. I'm pretty sure. So if there's a short here, does that mean that it's to do with the caps down here and the MOSFETs? Let's have a look. Okay, so they're, okay, so both sides are short to ground on these caps. What about these ones? Both sides of this are short to ground as well. What about the smaller caps? Interestingly, the smaller cap isn't both sides shorted to ground, it's just the one. There's an even smaller capacitor that I'm just about to have a look at, and that's the same. One side is short to ground, the other one's not. So it's the, it seems to be the big ones. What about down here? Exactly the same down here. So now I'm gonna measure the gate on the MOSFETs. Now I'm pretty sure, again, these are meant to be around about 0.6 volts. And just for quick reference, for me to get into diode mode on this multimeter, I go to the three symbols here, 
I press select until I get to the voltage and diode symbol. What we do for this is we put the red probe on ground and then we use the black probe to measure the gate on the MOSFET. That's coming back as 0.09 on the gate. Now I don't know if you remember in the Xbox One that I'd done, because they're meant to be pretty similar, it's meant to be 0.6. So now I'm gonna test the MOSFET next to that, the bigger one, because you've got the two, and I have 0.6. So on the smaller one, I've got 0.09, and on the bigger one, we've got 0.6. I'm just gonna check the MOSFETs down here, so I'm going to the next one now. That's, okay, so that one's 0.6 as well, the smaller one. And the bigger one, 0.6, okay, next one, 0.6. And the big one, 0.6. So it only seems to be this small MOSFET on the area of the board here that's having the issue. But then I'm wondering, okay, so if, if that's causing the issue, does it cause all of these big capacitors to short? I guess so. Now, I also know that down here, we have two more MOSFETs. So I'm gonna check these real quick, just to make sure. So I'm going to the gate of this. We've got 0.5, so that seems to be okay. 0.4. I'm assuming 0 0.5, 0 0.4 is good. So I think what I need to do is replace this MOSFET first off to see if that gets rid of the short. So let's try that. So I'm not a man of many donor boards. However, I know that this has 0 0.6 volts in diode mode. So we should be good. This is off an Xbox that was beep on beep off. So this is going to be me completely saying good night to this Xbox one. Just going to apply some flux. Hot air gun is at 460 degrees Celsius and it's 50% airflow. Alright, that's one done. So this is the one that we're replacing. All right, that looked like a fairly clean pull. I'm okay with that. That's fine, it's just that the tip isn't big enough on the soldering iron, but that should be okay. I'm just gonna line up the dot with the dot. All right. Tiny bit of flux to start with. Exactly same temperature and speed. Just gonna hold on to it though. That looks okay, it doesn't look amazing, but it looks okay, suffice. First off, let's give everything a good clean. I might heat the board up a second, just to get some of that flux flowing again, make it easier to clean off the board. The area is clean and suffice, looks all right. One thing I take from that is I probably should have pushed that down, but I mean, everything's making a solid connection. Let me test it actually, and make sure that we're getting 0.6 volts in diode mode. You might have to take my word for it until I uh, go back to the overhead cam. Yeah, 0 0.634, nice, okay, good. Do I now still get a short on those caps that are down here? That'll be the first thing to check, I think, right? I don't wanna get my hopes up yet and just try and turn it on, you know? Right, do we still get a short on these caps next to it? No. Okay, do you remember these big caps? They had they were shorted both both sides, but it's only one side to ground now, which is good. That's what we want. Little one's fine. What about down here? Amazing. And these ones seem to be fine as well. All of them that were shorted are okay. I also had a short up here, I remember testing off camera, and that's gone as well. So it's weird how one little MOSFET can cause that much damage. So what happens now, if you remember at the beginning where we went to ground and then we went to the first pin, and there's no short. There's no short, okay. There's only one more thing to do then, and that's to test and see if it turns on. Okay, this is huge. All right, two seconds. All right, so I've hooked up what I think is everything that I need to. I've got the hard drive, I've got the power supply, and I've got the fan, which is now back on. So I think initially, if we put this in, we get a fan spin, that's success number one. If we can then turn on the console and it just stays on, we had no power before, so that would be absolutely flipping amazing. Let's do this, wish me luck, here we go, come on. Give me this win. All right, well it didn't spin, so my hopes aren't really there. So let me try and turn it on. Oh, come on, let's go man, it's on, look. 
and it's staying on. And you can see the white light down by the glove. Oh my God, come on. Let me check, before I get too excited, let's check that I, if I put HDMI in that I have display because that would just finish me, I think, if I manage to get this working then there's no display. So let me check that now quick. No, we've just got, ah. Uh, yes, come on then, let's go, man. That's amazing. All right, let's go. All right, there we go. It seems to be on properly. Let me uh, give it a good old clean and I'll put it back together and we'll see if it plays games. I think we can all agree it's time to give this machine a bit of TLC. After I reassembled the Xbox One, everything seems to be fine and I was installing the game and FIFA got to like 90%. Then I actually tried to launch the game and the Xbox just turned off completely. It was very, very, very hot. Turns out there is actually a disc in the Xbox and it wasn't ejecting when I was pressing the eject button. All it was was like a DVD. After like 10 times of me pressing the eject button, it actually come out and I managed to put another FIFA disc in. The first FIFA I tried to install was like a digital download on my account. I just wanted to make sure that the actual disc drive was working. Then we have the same story. It just shut down again after maybe about five, 10 minutes of being on. So it's not like a, it turns on, then turns off after 30 seconds. It stays on for a good five, 10 minutes and then shuts off. Now I'm starting to get this message, which says the Xbox is designed to automatically shut down to protect it from insufficient ventilation. So now in my head, I'm thinking, well, the Xbox is just overheating and shutting off. That's why it's turning off. <sighs> I found the issue guys. And uh, needless to say, it's not looking good. I forgot to plug the blooming fan in. <laughs> I'll show you guys real quick what's going on with the disk drive and then we're going to take it apart again um, and I'm probably going to have to give it a decent clean because for some reason it's just not working. So if I turn the Xbox on and I try and eject the disk, it just spins, there is a disk in there and nothing happens. So my head is thinking that the rollers on the disk drive are maybe a little bit dirty and I need to clean them so I'm going to take this apart and we're going to do that now. Please ignore everything I just said. There was not a disk in the disk drive but there now is. Don't, yeah, there we go, okay, there it is. All right, so that's what actually came, it's a DVD that came with the Xbox. So we just put that in, and again. There we go. Uh, the clean probably done it good anyway, because like a clean should. And as you can see, it's now just about to start playing on the screen, there we go. I've just gone back to the dashboard as well, you can see that it brings up the Blu-ray. And then if I click it and zoom out, there we go. All right, so what hex? If you enjoyed, a quick reminder to hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel if you're new around here. And please make sure to comment if you have any feedback for myself. Today was a huge success. The video for the Xbox One S2 will be out next Saturday. Have a great rest of your weekend, guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.